In this presentation, we will discuss mixed costs. In prior presentation, we discussed the concept of breaking out costs, not how we normally see them on the income statement by their function, by what they're due, by what their purpose is, but instead by behavior, by how they act. And we had two standard categories about how costs act. We grouped things into two standard categories, those being variable costs and fixed costs. Variable costs being things like materials, which will go up with production level, down with production level, and those things that won't go up or down with production level, for example, the rent. So if we had something like the units here, units increasing as we increase the units of production, we see that variable costs will go up, such as direct materials, will typically go up and because it's going to go up with an increase in the production level. However, fixed costs like the rent, as the units go up, stay the same. There we have that 20,000. Total costs then have a variable and fixed component to it. So we've seen this in prior presentations. If we were to graph this then, we could see it clearly on the graph here. This 20,000 represents the fixed cost. This red line being the fixed costs that are staying the same as the production level increases the red line uh, stays the same the variable costs start at zero meaning if we don't make anything then we don't have any variable costs and they're going up at a constant rate in this example because they're going up as we uh, go up with production each new item giving a, a fixed level that will increase at a constant slope in this case and those are the variable costs total costs then start at the fixed cost area because of course at zero production level we still have to pay the rent and then they're going to increase at a standard level in relationship to the increase in the variable costs so this would be the great this is nice and neat it's easy for us to see in this format however there is the fact that we can't normally break out all costs between this nice neat fixed and variable costs sometimes we're going to have what's known as mixed costs and we're going to have to go through all of our costs all of our expenses and say is it variable, is it fixed, or is it oh, oh mixed? If it's mixed, then we're going to have to do something to it to break it out to its components. So, so mixed costs could be something like wages. Because wages, we know it's going to have maybe a salary component. We're going to have part of the wages that are salaries. And we might have part of the wages that are commission. The commission is more of a variable cost. The salaries are more of a fixed cost. So we might have other kind of variables involved. So when we look at just the, the expense item, we can't just say, well, that cost is variable or fixed. It's going to be mixed in some format. We're going to have to do some work there then if we want to break it out into the components of the two, which we do, which are variable and fixed for the CVP analysis. Utilities might have a different breakout for different reasons. So it might have a fixed base amount. For example, uh, if we don't do anything, we might have a base amount of utilities. We still have to pay some utilities possibly. And then it might go up at some type of fixed or, or variable type of rate a after that point. So it might act as a variable at some point. So you can see that then when we think about these mixed costs, in other words, we're going to have to go through all, all of our costs, first of all, and see where they categorize them. Are they fixed? Are they variable? Are they mixed? And then we're going to have to go look at those mixed costs and look how they behave. Can, it, how can we break these out? Because that's what we're going to want to do between the fixed and variable portion of these mixed costs and as we do so we need to consider what kind of things we'll probably see there something like this where wages acting a, a little bit differently than the mixed costs of utilities all mixed costs in other words are not going to be the same uh, what do you do for the cvp in the terms of these fixed cost of these mixed costs we separate them as best we can it is not a perfect world. This is not accounting. is not a perfect world. We're going to have to be using estimates. We're going to have to go into these mixed costs and say, okay, we don't like, we can't do mixed costs. They're too confusing. We don't want to deal with them. We need to break them out between fixed and variable. That's what we have to have for our contribution margin income statement. We don't, mixed costs don't fit in there at all. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to break those out somehow. It's not going to be perfect to do this. So we're going to have to go through all of those mixed costs and try to figure out how, how best can we do that. And there's certain methods to do this. Now, remember, these methods are not generally accepted accounting principles. They're not written in stone anywhere. These are best practices for us to try to consider how best we can break these out so that we can do the work of projections into the future, which, of course, in and of themselves are not perfect. They're estimates. They're projections into the future. So we're not financial accounting is more about us taking something that already happened 
and reporting it in accordance with a, with a certain set of rules. Here, we're projecting into the future. So we're trying to think, what's the best thing we can do? What matters in terms of our decision making? What doesn't matter in terms of our decision making? How can we break these out in some type of way that's a good estimate that will help us for, for decisions, but also doesn't cost too much for us to be uh, you know, grinding these numbers out forever, right? We can grind numbers out forever. So one way that the, the mixed costs could be broken out is we could have a stepwise type cost. And this might be something like salaries. We might see this in salaries where uh, you know, the salaries act kind of variable for a while and then they plateau and they, and they become fixed. So we might see in terms of uh, administrative salaries, this might happen where you know it's 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 goes it, it's fixed for a certain amount because they have salaries and then maybe at some point in time there's bonuses or maybe at some point in time after a certain production level then there's a salary increase or something like that and therefore we see this kind of step pattern for those type of costs well when we see that type of pattern we can we can say okay we see we see this type of pattern we can predict that type of pattern we can we can take that into consideration when we consider our forecasting into the future our projections we can usually treat it then as either fixed or variable by analyzing this pattern and just and thinking about okay is this the relevant range when we're talking about a, a variable type of range or is this the relevant range that we're thinking about in our projection that's a fixed type of range and therefore, within our, our analysis, we may be able to break out within those ranges, whether it be fixed or variable. That's one way we can kind of step or, or treat a certain type of mixed costs when we see this type of pattern. We also might see more of a curvilinear type of cost pattern. In other words, it's not going up in a straight linear line, but instead it's got a, a, a shape to it and that's going to have some changes. So now it's not as easy to deal with, obviously, straight lines. <laughs> are a lot easier to deal with. So now we see that as as this goes up, as, as the units go up, the uh, mixed cost is going up, but it's not going up at a, at a standard amount. It might be something like direct labor is where we might see a pattern such as this because the direct labor can be a little bit confusing. Of course, it's not completely straightforward. We might be paying someone hourly as they uh, make the production levels, but th things can change within the production level. For example, if we start hiring people, the first people that we hire will typically increase our production level uh, more quickly. And then at some point it'll flatten out. If we hire more people, then they won't increase the production level quite as uh, quickly. And then at some point in time, of course, the, if we hire more people, they'll actually get in the way of each other and our productivity won't increase with more people that we hire. So in that case then, we're not going to see possibly this straight line uh, variable cost system in a curvilinear type of cost system such as this. We're going to have to figure out then because we want to graph in terms of a straight line for the CVP analysis so that we can make a nice easy type of analysis. So in cases like this, we have this kind of funny uh, curvilinear mixed costs. We're going to have to figure out some kind of ways. Well, how can we break this out into such a way that make it strictly variable and a strictly fixed type of portion? That's what we'll need to see more of a linear type of fashion so that we can put this into a contribution margin income statement so we can use projections into the future. We'll discuss a few ways to do that in future presentations.